Howdy, 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 folks. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Hey, listen, uh, I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to Black Dragon Biker TV. Uh, this is what we call the Black Dragon Sunday Roundtable, where we have uh, some of the uh, coolest voices on talk, uh, uh, Facebook, and podcast radio when it comes to biker stuff. Uh, we have Wild on Twos, Hollywood, and uh, typically we have Shaggy on here, uh, Shaggy 1%er and Big Bone 1%er. I think Bone is supposed to be coming on. Uh, we're waiting for him. Uh, and um, we uh, do this Sunday nights, the round table. And tonight we have a, uh, uh, a special guest, and we're going to talk about some uh, special things Um so uh, we really can't uh, wait for that, uh, this show. What I want you guys to do is I want you guys to um, uh, do me a favor. And uh, if you know somebody that's prior military, that's a veteran, um, and, uh, and, and it's most especially somebody that's dealing with the VA or needs to deal with the VA, I, I'm really so excited to be able to put this show on because this show... Uh, we have a veteran biker whose YouTube channel is uh, Veteran Biker. Is that what it is? Veteran Biker 1? Yes, sir. Just uh, Veteran Biker. Veteran Biker. Veteran Biker. He's on YouTube, a brand new YouTuber. Uh, so first of all, congratulations to your show. Oh, he's gone. Uh, congratulations <laughs> for your show, man. And uh, we, uh, we're really excited about having him on. And he also is a veteran, uh, kind of like service officer. He'll explain more about that. But he helps veterans get their benefits. So um, we will uh, first hear from our roundtable, and um, and then we will move forward. So hey, what's up, uh, Hollywood, bro? Doing good, man. Doing good. What's up, Wild On Veteran Biker BD? Congrats on your uh, new book. Uh, everybody, hopefully, you go and get that sucker for him, man. He's broke. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, my new book. I need some toilet material. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> TMI. <laughs> my new book uh, is uh, is on Amazon. It is um, President's Bible. Uh, 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 you know, this book is actually six books long. So this is Chronicle One of Veterans, uh, of uh, veterans of uh, the uh, uh, President's Bible. And Chronicle One is Principles of Leadership. And we go through the 14 scientific principles of leadership to uh, include uh, what you will see taught to uh marine officers and uh and and sailors and 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 marines as well as naval officers and uh navy uh men petty officers and things like that so uh hopefully you guys get that it's available on amazon it's available on kindle and it's available uh signed copies from my uh page blackdragonsgear.com so that's cool we can't forget Hollywood's books. Hollywood, what do you got? Three, four books out now? Jeez. Yeah, I got enough of them, man. <laughs> I got I to make a coloring book or something. Yeah, yeah man. Thing. You got to catch up with us, man. Co I'm Come a out, coloring man. book. So Hollywood's latest book, uh, what is it? Brotherhood. Uh, what is it, Hollywood? Brotherhood and Betrayal. Brotherhood and Betrayal. That's out, uh, available on Amazon on and Kindle. Uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, so, Hollywood, tell us how to get to your station, your channels, and all that. Uh, well, you can download our uh, radio app on Insane uh, Radio. Uh, dot, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, Insane Throttle Radio on, uh, what is that, Google Play? Or you can uh, go to our webpage, Listen Live, uh, InsaneVoltage.com, 24-7 rock and roll, baby. And then you get to hear uh, the morning show where I pick on all the women and stuff uh, at 8.15. That's cool. And then we have Wild on 2. Wild, tell us about you, sir. Welcome to the Shit. show. As always, co-host. As of the always, show. even though I don't know all my channel's listings and shit, but Wild on 2's vlog on YouTube. I do have a Facebook. Don't use it much. I have an Instagram. Don't use it much. So I'm not like these guys. Um, I've been trying to put out things every Thursday. The past month has sucked, but I got back on track. So every Thursday about from 2 o'clock to 4 p.m., I'm going to keep releasing videos and uh, just had a nice little interview with Shaggy. Uh, Hollywood is on there. That was fun. 
had a good time uh, called Man Behind the Patch. It's where we talk to uh, patch members and learn more about them as the person. Because as we know, like the man makes the patch, but people think that the patch makes the person. A lot of people hide behind some patches. So I like showing and illustrating who people are. And uh, sometimes you see the differences even between rival clubs. They'll like each other if they actually get to know each other somehow, have a connection, in other words, especially veterans. Like a lot of veterans you see in rival clubs that then when they start talking and have the same stories when they were at war or got PTSD or lost uh, friends in, at war, they kind of have a relation somehow that they can kind of you know bond with. So that's about it. So, uh, uh, I was just wondering about that shirt. Like, uh, how many? How many do you give? <laughs> None. That is, None. You're going to hell. <laughs> you're just going to hell. I was waiting for the like, as long as the girls are naked with flames coming out of you know areas. I'm happy. That is a that is a misuse of the word none. In that, uh, just I just want you to know, <laughs> you don't spell none like that. You got the whole shirt wrong. Are we gonna go over the cut? Are we gonna go over the cut saga too while we're at it? <laughs> no, we're not, we're not gonna do that today. And we have a new YouTuber. What's up, man? Veteran biker. Yeah. Appreciate it. So tell us about your show, man. And you're our special guest tonight. So uh, tell us about your show and when it comes on and, and what do you do on uh, Veteran Biker? Well, I started my YouTube channel about a year ago and uh, just was messing around. Uh, basically made made some videos. I got a real good buddy of mine that I served with overseas whenever I was stationed over in uh, Europe. And uh, he has diabetes, lost a leg or lost a foot. Oh uh, not, not the leg, but a foot can't ride anymore. Me and that dude put thousands of miles on bikes over in, uh, in England, Italy, Germany, Scotland. We rode to Russia, Spain, Northern Africa. And, uh, whenever I moved back to the States and, you know, he, he said, uh, sent me a GoPro camera and he said, you know, make some videos and share with me. So I did, I started making some videos and, uh, just kind of basically sharing them with him through Dropbox and uh, Dropbox is too much of a pain in the ass. So I just started a YouTube channel so you could start watching. And uh, people find my channel interesting. Um, I'm a pretty straight shooter. John, me and you come from the same background, submarine community. Uh, no bullshit. And uh, straightforward. Just tell it like it is. People want to. People want to. Uh, nobody likes the truth, but, you know, the truth likes everybody. And uh, back in January, I had an accident and I got it on uh, YouTube or got it on GoPro. And that got thousands upon thousands of, of views just because uh, people like rubbernecking and seeing people get hurt, I guess. And uh, I started doing some live streams on Wednesday nights, just interviewing different YouTubers and uh, had some great guys on there. Had Robert Simmons from down. I think he's in your way in Georgia. I uh, had Cycle Fanatics on, uh, Doodle on a Motorcycle. I've had, had some real good people on, uh, interviewing, learning a lot. And uh, I ride with the Combat Vets Motorcycle Association, and uh, Vets Help Vets. And uh, I think that's how John, John and I connected, or uh, BD and I connected. And uh, I'm a veteran service officer, like we'd spoke, and my job – Every day of the week, five days a week, I help vets file for uh, for claims, benefits, uh, disability benefits. Uh, sometimes you're you're working with the spouses, uh, filing for burial benefits, um, education, folk rehab, that whole gamut of when veterans leave the military. And I know there's a large veteran population in the motorcycle community. No, no vet, or at least I don't miss the work. I don't miss the shift work. I don't miss being out to sea for three months at a time, but I miss the brotherhood. And I think that's what MC culture, motorcycle culture, uh, riding clubs, motorcycle associations like myself, I think that helps replace or fill that void for vets that, that miss that brotherhood. And I know a lot of the, the big clubs uh, have started from military veterans, and I think that's part of the reason. I think me and Wild on Twos had, had – uh, traded some conversation back and forth uh, about that as well. So we're looking at your sh your your show here on uh, on YouTube, 
Yes, sir. Uh, this is really cool. You got a whole lot of material up here. So uh, we want you guys to get over here. This Is this the one, 12,000, not a Harley Sport? Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to look at it on yours. Bumper kiss. Scroll up. There you go. That's the one where I got rear-ended uh, by a teenage girl playing with her dog. And uh, uh -huh. I got slammed into the back of a uh, Toyota 4Runner. Tore my ACL, MCL, and my left knee. Oh, Lord. Was out for about six weeks and uh, luckily didn't need any surgery. And uh, had some uh, what they call um, PRP injections. It's plasma replacement. They inject it in. It helps regrow the ligaments. And uh, avoided the knife, which I'm really happy about. That is really cool, man. Um, so I appreciate it. So we, we, we absolutely... Uh appreciate you uh, being on the show today. Um, and what we want to talk about, um, so uh, if you've ever had to uh, deal with, um, if you've ever had to deal with uh, a situation where you have gotten out of the military and you want to get your benefits, um, or even if you're in the military trying to get out and get your benefits, it is a terrible situation that the military forces you to go through. The, the situation is absolutely terrible. And so um, the bottom line is the military has called too many of us to action, too many of us are hurt, and Congress doesn't want to pay for us. So they put an elaborate bureaucracy together to keep you from your benefits um, by making you go through all kinds of things to prove the things that are wrong with you. And one of the biggest things that they don't do is they don't have an active program where they teach you how to go about getting the benefits that you deserve. For instance, in my case, um, it, it, it's been more than 20 years, uh, and I've just started the battle to fight for benefits, and it is one hell of a battle. It's almost as though they have designed the system to make you say, to hell with it, I quit. And if it weren't for guys like you, um, uh, and and other veterans kinds of services uh, we would be lost in the bureaucracy in the rules if you don't get this turned in in 90 days you can never you know you've lost all rights and all kinds of stuff and so I wanted to be able to to have someone on the show I've been wanting to do this show for a long time uh, and you and I are both submarine sailors and I, I want you guys to know veteran biker comes from th this is a his shirt is true this is a salty mother effer right here. Is because, that the semen or? Uh, no, no. See, that, that disrespect there. We're going to kick your ass. <laughs> the uh, saltiness comes from the fact that this guy has served on some of the baddest ass submarines in the Navy. Uh, I got lucky. I got lucky. He, he, he was on uh, what we call special operations boats or spec op boats. Yep. Uh, and that's where the best of the best go. And these guys do. They tell us that. Well, and it's true. And, <laughs> and these guys do. Submarines are already. We're already stealthy. We already slip behind. Every submarine operates behind enemy lines and all this kind of stuff. And these guys do this times 10. And uh, I had, the, uh, I had the, uh, uh, the pleasure of serving on the Salt Lake City, a uh, spec op SEAL team boat. Um, and, uh, 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 but he, this guy has served on spec op boat after spec op boat after spec op boat. And, uh, and that's one of them back there in his background. So, uh, I'm, I just, it's just really cool. So in the submarine world, we have rock stars. This man's a rock star. Um, and, and it's just, uh, really so cool to have him on here. And then he's also working to help. Uh, uh, fellow uh, military guys. Of course, he he's in an office with uh, army guys, and uh, yeah, I don't know. it is. I got four <laughs> army guys that are 
Yeah, I got four Army guys that work for me. I tell people that come into the office every day is Veterans Day. You know, um, <clears throat> all we do is help vets. Um, I, re I really appreciate that build up, John I, or uh, BD. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to uh, let anybody down. Um, <laughs> as far as the veteran community, I've got some really good stories, some real success stories that we've had working in the veteran uh, realm. And then I've got some that are, are like you mentioned, where it's an ongoing battle. The trouble is the VA is an entity here. The military is an entity here. When you leave the military, they give you about a week and a half of training, uh, how to write a resume. It's called and TAPS. TAPS class, exactly. Right. Transition Assistance Program. They give you about two weeks training after you've been institutionalized for, say, 15, 20, sometimes 30 years. And you're supposed to know how this other machine, the VA, works. And it, it's not easy. Uh, the veteran service officers were actually established at the end of the Civil War uh, by President Lincoln, whenever he established the VA, he also established veteran service officers and there's supposed to be a veteran service officer in every county. And uh, that is to help those vets in that county to file benefits um, with the VA. And it is, it is a gamut and uh, you have to be a veteran or the spouse of a veteran to work as a veteran service officer so that you have that that kind of tribal knowledge or that inside knowledge. And the other thing is you've got guys and gals that come in and talk about things, PTSD, military sexual trauma, uh, deployments, things that happen on deployment. And I don't think they could really communicate or would be as open communicating with someone that's not a veteran. And it's just like uh, Wild was saying earlier uh, with, with the MCs, guys in one MC can talk to another guy in another MC differently than somebody that's not in that culture can talk to them. It's, you know, it's like we, we've wore the same moccasins. We wore the same boots. We wore this, you know, our, our patch might be different, but we, we've got that same uh, semblance of, of brotherhood and having a veteran service officer as a veteran, um, it, it helps. And uh, sometimes the conversations are tough. Sometimes the conversations are easy. Sometimes the conversations end with the the people slamming the door and walking out but you know uh we try to help as many as possible in any way that i can and you know uh, what's pretty messed up about that is it, the government has this has to have guys that should be entitled to everything but yep. they make them go through all this crap that's bullshit right there i agree I agree. It's tough. Oh, it is yeah. tough. But yeah, this is, I mean, I, I'm not a veteran like that. Maybe I, I did the Salvation Army at the most. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, doing being in healthcare, I can see how there's a lot of people that barely never really work, have 13 kids, and they get funding benefits. They get, I mean, instantly. They, I mean, compared to veterans, how hard it is. I what I noticed at the hospital for veterans to even get things approved. Uh, they. Instead of going to the VA, they come to our hospital all the time. So they're going to get service quicker. It's quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with TRICARE and everything. And Yep, absolutely right. Yep. I mean, I could tell you, I'll tell you one of our biggest success stories that we've had in our office. So I had a, uh, I had a service member that was killed in combat uh, here in Arkansas where I live. He was killed in combat, uh, had a daughter. The daughter was being taken care of by his mother. The, 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 the daughter, uh, her mom was a, a warden of the state. So, you know, not really capable of doing anything locked up the daughter and the grandmother living, um, uh, you know, barely paying their light bill, barely paying their, you know, barely paying the rent kind of thing. And, uh, they got word that, you know, they might be entitled to some benefits. So we helped them with that, with that, they had never received the, the veterans uh, servicemen's group life insurance. Whenever the service members dies, there's an actual life insurance policy that the that the, the government has on them. Like uh, about two hundred grand, right? Uh, I think it was about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yep. And nobody sought her out to to give her that. So we helped them run the gamut of getting that. Because her father was killed in combat, she can go to college anywhere in the United States at a state-run college for free. 
uh, the grandmother gets a stipend every month to pay or uh, being paid to help take care of the daughter. And then the daughter also gets a check from the social security and the VA to pay for her own care. So they went from not being able to pay the rent or, or pay their mortgage and keep the lights on and decide whether or not they were going to buy food or put gas in their car to the daughter is going to be the first person in her family to, to go to college. And uh, the, the grandma, uh, she was, it, it's a tough situation, but she had tears of joy that something like something good like this came out of that. And uh, she said, you know, I, how much, how much do I owe you? And I said, you don't owe me anything. And she's just an old country girl that lives here in the Ozark mountains. And uh, she said, well, what, what can I do for you? And I said, you know, uh, the next time you make some chicken and dumplings and some cornbread, bring me some about two, three days later, she showed up at our office with a crock pot of uh, chicken and dumplings and cornbread and homemade iced tea and right. we took over the moon. So we changed her life, you know, changed that daughter's life that she'd go to college, you know, and uh, something good has came out of, of something bad. And that's the way I try to look at, you know, helping, helping vets is we're trying to get something good out of, you know, walking on steel decks on a submarine, getting on your hands and knees because there ain't no mops. Uh, everything's with a sponge and terry cloth being in the TDU room, uh, packing trash. Um, uh, I see, I see black dragon smiling and those are, uh, those are smiles of, of, of strong memories. Um, that stinky ass trash, those TDU weights. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Watch, being on the sound powered phones. <laughs> yep. And you got to pump it 237 times to open the ball valve. Yep, exactly. Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh, yep. I, I had never even, I haven't even thought about that since I was. You don't, that. you don't. <laughs> um, and uh, the, the vast majority of veterans we're seeing now, we're seeing a lot of uh, the VA or Congress had just recognized that agent orange caused bladder cancer, prostate cancer, and cirrhosis of the liver. So we're seeing a lot of veterans come in that hopefully some of your viewers know, or family members that served in Vietnam experienced agent orange and they had these things happen to them and they didn't know that it was related to Agent Orange. Congress has now recognized that. Uh, the next big thing that we're going to see is the burn pit registry that's getting passed for people that served in Iraq and Afghanistan that were exposed to the burn pits. And that was basically just human uh, shit that was getting burned with, with diesel and fuel. Like and they used to do in Vietnam, but, uh, yep. uh, but there was no, uh, you know, they they didn't get the, the recognition in Vietnam. The recognition, like, yep. Like for Agent Orange or anything else. Yeah. Uh, listen, now uh, let me interrupt you for a second. We've got Big Bone One Percenter from the Mighty Outclass Motorcycle Club Nation who has just joined us. Hey, man, good to have you on the show. Yeah. Also, What's going on? <laughs> also, a Marine that, you know, they're not former Marines. When I first joined, I was a corpsman. Uh, I used to be stationed with a bunch of Marines. Oh, uh, you're Doc. 29 Pecker. bombs for two Pecker. years. Pecker. 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 <laughs> That's what we call them. Another thing, funny story about a about a corpsman. Every corpsman, it doesn't matter what's on his driver's license or on his DD two fourteen. That corpsman's name is Doc. I'm a short Doc, tall Doc, black Doc, white Doc, uh, like like car wreck Doc, simplest Doc, damn ass shot Doc. There's a story behind whatever his Doc name is, but he's Doc. Hey, he's the closest he's thing to a Doc we have. Um, that is a fact. And on, and on submarines, we have independent duty corpsmen. And isn't that what you were when you were in the uh, when you worked for the uh, Marine Corps as a corpsman? Were you an independent duty corpsman? I was FMF, which is field field marine fleet marine force, and uh, uh, I was down in Twenty Nine Palms with with a unit of Marines. That was a bad part of the world. I cross rated and got out of that and went from Marines to submarines. So you know, out of the pot and into the kettle, basically. Uh, for anybody that wants to call in tonight, our show phone number is 404-692-0336, 404-692-0336. I want to take now, uh, we are, uh, we're, we're 25 minutes into the show. I want to really start digging and talking about some things with you. Um, so yes, sir. You were in the Navy. What, 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 what did you do? What was your, your rate while you were in the Navy on submarines? Whenever I was in the Navy, I worked as a sonarman, and then I cross-rated over and went Navy diver. Okay, so you went you went full time, full time yep. Navy diver. Mm -hmm. Yep, full full time frogman. 
that's really cool. So uh, I was a, I was a, uh, I was a sonar tech as well uh, yep. in the beginning. Uh, we called them sonar girls back then. Q5 uh, after, Bravo we had, I think. After we, <laughs> after we left the the uh, sonar world, now I became fire control. So um, one of the things I want to talk about is um, let's talk about when you're first getting ready to get out of the Navy or okay. any service. Okay. So um, what guys don't – so let me point this out. So when we were in submarines, there were there, – there was a, a, this idea of being a hot runner, and a hot runner is a, uh, is a torpedo that is lit off in the torpedo tube, and um, that we call that a, a hot run. And there are certain ways that you've got to shut that torpedo down. If you can't shut it down, everybody dies. So a guy that comes to a submarine that's got his uh, act together is known as a hot runner. And um, there's so much emphasis put on being a hot runner or someone who works through pain, like on a football field. You got, you got players that fall down every time they get injured, and you got players that work through pain, and they're taking corduroy shots and their knees and all this kind of stuff. Um, and, and those are the guys with the team spirit and, and in a special warfare, uh, background like we have in the submarine force or, uh, that, uh, uh, bone would have as a Marine. We look down on malingerers. We look down on whiners. We look down on people who don't, uh, make it happen no matter what. And you can get used to doing that in the military so much so that when it comes time to get out, you, you're so used to working through pain, working through tiredness, uh, uh, being one of the ones that can be counted upon no matter what, that a lot of these guys will not take the time to significantly document their injuries, uh, their maladies, their mental crises, and you get five or ten years out of the military and you're going through all of these these crises, and you don't even know. You never even looked at how to get the kind of help you might need, the mental health, the resources. You don't even know what the VA has for you. And um, you don't know about the programs because you were so used to working through every crisis. So yeah. as you're coming to a point in time that you're getting out of the military, my advice is, to find yourself, and then uh, we've got a, a field services officer here. My press advice one. is to. Um, uh, Ruth, to run. Um, to accept, press one to send a oh, voice. Oh, you already got a call in. Two. All right, caller, we got you. Give me just a second, and we'll have you on. So, um, we uh, we 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 get so used to um, to to doing this, and and one of my you know I want to advise is that maybe you find a veteran services officer and start getting your act together even before you get out of the military. So could you speak to that? You are a thousand percent right. I, I don't know how how many times <clears throat> on a submarine we get 160 people, right? One guy goes down with an injury, um, it, it doubles that load on everybody else. And so many guys work through so many things, not just in submarines, in the Marine Corps. Uh, I'm sure you no know, Lance Corporal wants to go tell his sergeant he's got – you know, uh, broken arches or, or blisters on his on his feet, and he can't do the ruck march or can't do this. Um, in in the medical community for wild on twos, whenever an, uh, another medical person calls in, somebody else got to cover that load. And uh, I highly recommend if you're active duty, you start talking to a veteran service officer well before you get out, a year, a year and a half before you, and maybe you just want to talk to them. And you, you might still re-enlist. That, that's okay. Um, but, but you need to get in the mindset that when you're done with the Navy or you're done with the Marines or the Air Force, they're done with you. And then you go to the, to the next level. You go to the next group, and that's called the VA. And if you're not prepared and have the right stuff, it, it, you're, you're going to fight an unfair battle with, with the VA. And if if you prepare yourself with the right ammunition, the right uh, materials, and basically it's information and documentation from what happened to you uh, while you while you're active duty, your medical records. But that's a great point, Black Dragon. Yeah, one of the comments, like uh, Fireball said, document, document, document. Uh, that, that's true for a thousand everyone. percent. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk about what document, document, document means for a second. Okay. Doc document, document means. 
and, and this is this is this is the important stuff here. Document, document, document means that as you are going through things in the military, whenever something happens to you, there's a medical record. And in my day, it was an actual physical record. It could be a disc now. I don't know. And um, there, there's, um, there's this medical record that follows you. And people that are responsible for keeping up this medical record sometimes are very competent and sometimes they're not uh sometimes they'll they'll comb through your record and snatch stuff out throw it away sometimes they they're doing exactly what they should sometimes they're doing more than what they should you don't know who the hell has their hands on your records so every time you go to the doctor and there's a procedure done it's going to be put in your medical record and and then for us they would give us the medical record back and then we'd go take it and turn it in somewhere stop by a copy machine yeah copy your record over and over again commit Use those picture of it. Uh, and see we didn't have these in my day exactly <laughs> yeah. you take a picture of that commit it to the cloud yep and now you have a listen there was a guy that uh, we were helping in my club, uh, the Black Sabbath Nation. We were helping this guy, and they actually told him you were never in the military. And uh, he was a Vietnam era veteran. Vietnam era veteran, and there was no record of this guy being where he said he was to get this treatment that he was supposed to have. And they they had like a hundred and twenty six thousand dollars back pay for him. And the only thing that saved him was a crumpled yellow piece of paper that he had saved. For 30 years, that he, he, he decrepitly, if you opened it up, it looked like it would fall apart. And this is what was the, the proof that he needed. So document, document, document means keep your damn documents for the entire ter- entirety of your career. You, you have to be the shepherd of your documents. Yes, sir. We used to have a saying uh, in the Marine Corps, I hope it's still around. And uh, it's real simple. It says documentation beats conversation every time. That's it. Documentation Absolutely. beats conversation every time. Don't matter what you can talk about. You got to have something on paper. Yeah. Actually, we have a caller in. So uh, is this Adam House? Is that who this is? Yeah. Hey, man. Welcome to the show, bro. Thank you. So, um, you know, we don't have a real audience. I just have a button. <laughs> which I'm in love with that stupid button. Uh, so, it is a real audience. <laughs> it is. So uh, tell me, we don't have a, a, a live audience that is actually clapping for you, but I know your brothers are clapping. So what did you want to add to the conversation, sir? Well, I was in the Marine Corps, and uh, I got out in 1999, and I was two weeks out of the Marine. It went to my civilian job, but I still work at day. Having a horrible time adjusting, you know, I just got back to my second before that these dudes all play golf and do all this shit. I don't even, you know, just can't fit in nowhere. So then I really started showing from PTSD, so I started going to the VA. But they started sending me to their own psychologist, and what I learned right off the bat in talking to them, and I'm not saying their motive isn't to help people, but they kept wanting to talk to me about everything before the Marine Corps. They kept wanting to talk to me about my childhood and all this stuff, and, uh, my whole thing is you stick to what's on your DD-214, you speak what happened to you in the military and what your life is like now. Because my take on what I went through, they kept trying to, like, see me into saying something was wrong with me before I went to the Marines. The other thing I wanted to add is just what you were talking about. In March of 1998, we were on a, a training exercise at Camp Lejeune. I was in C2 Golf Company. Long story short, a guy in my squad was shooting an M249 saw. He said he had a, a round that was jammed in there, so I went over there and popped the barrel off, and there was a round in there cooked off. Well, the bullet went down range, and the case was with my leg. Long story short, fast forward to my civilian life. Well, I go to the VA because I've been having problems with my right leg. They had absolutely zero record of that incident happening. But luckily for me, when they discharged me from the hospital at Camp Lejeune, they gave me my physical discharge papers that I put in that big, thick, rubber, like, folder thing they give you a boot camp where they tell you to put all your shit in there. 
I took that out, went down to the VA, and just by me providing that document, instantly it went through. And the guy down there told me, here's the deal. The VA is not going to hunt your records up for you. You have to provide it. You know, whatever you got to do to get it is a different story. But so far, everything I've encountered with the VA, I've had documentation. But I got a lot of friends, a lot of guys I got motorcycles with who were getting in the 70s or getting out in the 80s. They don't have anything. And these guys go down there and they talk and they're like, well, sorry, you know, we don't have the records. So those are the only two things I just wanted to add. Well, we absolutely appreciate you, man, being on the show and adding those. And I'm going to—I uh, I appreciate it. we're going to—we're going to cut off now. Thank you, man. Hey, Black Dragon, if I can, in regard to uh, that caller, um, I'm sorry if, if we lost him. I, I was going to ask him. It sounds like he was with uh, 310, Third Battalion, 10th Marines, because I think he said he was with Golf. You still um, with us, Adam? I was in two two golf early. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I was second Marine Division, but I was, I was third battalion, tenth Marines. But but we did stuff with y'all on occasion. Okay. So so, but yeah, man, I I had a very similar uh, a very similar kind of a thing. My experience with the VA was started off with the same exact stuff because um, you know I had knees knees and ears and some others you know, knees uh, ears. Yeah, let me try to shit in English. Ears, knees. And uh, and the PTSD, and in regard to the knees, they were ready to eh, nah, it isn't a real thing, but they had um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I had to go to the uh, to the BAS, the Battalion Aid Station, because for the first time in my Marine Corps career, I fell out of a run, and that was young, healthy, and the whole thing. Uh, what happened from running so much? I wore out the you know the cartilage in your knees, and then jumping out of jumping out of trucks and jumping out of this and jumping out of that, you know, so my knees were fucked. Um, the neat thing was, is that uh, the Marine Corps or the, uh, a good corpsman, actually, on a good corpsman said, you know what? He goes, because uh, ordinarily back then, this was in the eighties, back then it was like, uh, shake it off, walk it off. Man, can't walk too good. Uh, so the corpsman was like, uh, and I remember this like it was yesterday. The corpsman says, you know what? And he repeated that same mantra. Hey, documentation beats conversation every time. I want you to get some more stuff. I need you to have some more attention. I want you to take this, take that. He goes, so I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put you on this stuff. I'm going to do this, do that, and do the other thing. Had it not been for this corpsman being so damn persistent, then it wouldn't have been anything with the knees. Uh, with the ears, that was almost like a slam dunk because I was attached uh, for a bit. I was attached to, in, th in 310, attached to an artillery battery. That's where loud bombs go boom. A yep. lot. That's like what you do. Uh, so that was a but but had it not been for uh, the uh, uh, a corpsman being really motivated about making sure that, hey, man, let's take this down. Let's let's look into this. You know, I, I it's 2021. I'd be screwed right now. And I'm, I'm I still got some other issues that we just not settled. But, you know, but uh, in fact, uh, veteran biker uh, a little bit later on, I want to pick your brain about some of that. See if you can get me squared away. Absolutely. Let's, Any let's questions I can ask or answer, uh, I, I'll do the best that I, best of my ability and my experience that I've helped with. So let's talk right for on. just a moment about, uh, okay, so uh, documentation beats conversation, but what if you ain't got none? So there's something that I've learned uh, because they're not going to – listen, I, I, it was over 30 years ago that I served. There's documents that just ain't there. Yeah, uh, They can't find them. They disappeared. And the government has put the onus on you. If you can't prove it, it didn't exist. But there is one thing that they do uh, accept that I have learned about recently, and that is the buddy letter. And the buddy letter is a yep. very important document because they will take the sworn um, uh, affidavit, that, if you will, uh, uh, of, of people that served with you. So... Um, um, uh, this buddy, I just wrote, I just actually wrote a, a buddy document for a friend of mine. So here's something that I believe uh, um, is very important. And that is, veteran biker, tell me if I'm wrong. The, the problem with the buddy doc, you meant the buddy letter, uh, is your, if your buddies die, the story died with them. And Absolutely. so several of my buddies have now died. So if you feel like 
uh, you, you, you're going to have a case or something like that. Every year that we live, we're going to lose buddies up until the time we die, and then our buddies lose us. Absolutely. So at some point, uh, better sooner than later, not 10 years later, not 15 years later, but now when you get out, get your buddy letters while they're fresh in your buddies' minds, while your buddies still have their minds, while they haven't uh, been committed to institutions or, or yeah. laying up in a coma or have died or have disappeared off of the face of the earth. All these things happen. And so not only do you not have any documentation, but the buddies that saw that start falling off, especially when you're like me, 30 years out almost now. Uh, so that's terrifying. What, what do you have to say about that, veteran biker? First things first, um, when, when you get out or when you're planning to get out or when you're planning to file this claim, sit down with a piece of paper and come up with as many names of guys that you served with and, and gals that you served with and just get those names down. Through the magic of face bag, you can find a lot of those people and reconnect with them and let them know that that's a good start. Number two, contact your local veteran service office. Go to your county courthouse. They're going to have an office that's a uh, that's that's an arm from the county courthouse. And what you want to do is talk to that veteran service officer. And you want to start with a piece of paper called an intent to file. It's a 2122 intent to file. What that does is that puts the line in the sand for that claim. So if you start that claim, say September 1st, they don't decide your claim until 13 months later. They pay you back pay to the day that you filed that claim, that you started that claim. So you're talking thousands of dollars. So you need to at least start that claim, that that intent to file. That that is your your Mendoza line for baseball fans. It, it starts that that process. Talk to these veteran service officers. A lot of them are ex or They're all ex military. Some of them are retired, my, like myself, and uh, they we get paid to help you, and we don't we don't charge anything. We don't take a percentage of your your claim. We don't take a percentage of your back pay. It is our job just to help you. And we've got big, thick books, and we go to training every year to keep up to date on what's changing in that process. But write those names down. When you got photos of your old veteran buddies, turn that photo over on the back and write the names of those vets down on the back because 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, you're not going to remember those guys. Write those names down on the back of that letter or on the back of that photo, you know. Um, it's funny, me and Black Dragon, were, we, we spoke offline on the phone about buddy letters on the same day that he had a, a, fo a phone call or a letter fr from one of his friends asking for a buddy letter. That That's huge. Um, and it's just got to be simple. It's like, yeah, I was here at this time and I witnessed this. I was here with Big Bone and we were firing artillery and nobody had hearing protection because we didn't have any, you, you know. Um, which happens a lot of times, you know, um, it, it's, it's just that simple. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, high speed. It, it's, it's a very simple letter that is corroborating that, that veterans claim. Thirdly, this is, this is super important. Most vets know where their DD-214 is, that, that discharge document. The people that don't know where it is are the family members after something happens to that veteran. So let your families know where that DD-214 is because something's going to happen to us at one point. It, it's just, that's just life. And they need that document so that they can get you buried at a national cemetery if that's what you want. They can get help with the burial benefits. The VA will pay a, a percentage of your burial benefits. Say you have an accident because we all like motorcycles and you're in a coma. They got a copy of that DD-214. They can go through the VA and start getting you paid at a hundred percent disability while something's happening to you. They need to know where that document is. They need that. Very important. They need, they need to know where it is just like you know where it is. Now, Black Dragon, when you say if they're committed to an institution, could you qualify which sort of institution you're referring to? Just wondering. 
<laughs> um, oh, I, no. I, was, I was talking about um, uh, being committed, you know, to whatever kinds of institutions, mental or penal. I know some other guys. I can help you with this because I see it, I've see i seen it happen. You have a vet that's 100% disabled vet. He's receiving $3,500, $4,000 a month. He does something that uh, he shouldn't have done. He goes to jail. They stop paying him after 90 days of incarceration. He does his 10 years, five years of time, two years, whatever he does. The day he gets out, they restart that compensation. Okay. Okay. That's actually and good to know. If he is married or he has a child under the age of 18 mm -hmm. while he's incarcerated, his, his old lady or his child can receive that benefit. They receive 90%, not the entire 100%. They'll receive 90% for their okay. own well-being and their own care. Okay. So hey, Black good. Dragon, I, 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 I have to, uh, I got to get ready for uh, my radio show. So I'm going to catch out of here, guys. Right, right. All right, Hollywood, take care. Hollywood, All right, Hollywood. Talk with you. See you guys later. Thanks. And you can get Hollywood and Saint Throttle on his YouTube channel, uh, in Saint Throttle Biker TV, and you can get Hollywood on his uh, radio station. We're glad to have him. He's a weekly host on the uh, on the thing. Of course, uh, tonight he didn't have a whole lot to say, uh, as this is uh, kind of a, been a kind of veteran thing thrown in the game. I'm a spectator. Let's, let's take. Uh, but well, we love you though. Uh, that, that's just, all that matters. That's all. We matters. don't want we don't want spectators in the Tater family, but that's a whole different video. <laughs> so uh, the uh, Family Life 4211 is uh, part of our group. Uh, he said earlier tonight, TAPS classes didn't do anything to teach him about the VA, uh, and TAPS classes don't. You you really don't get any education about the VA. So you know if you are in service, th these are why we're telling you some of the things that we're telling you. Uh, Timothy Korn says TAPS was worthless. It's just a check in the box so they can say we prepared them. Uh, really, I mean, uh, two weeks, I mean, they teach you how to write a resume. But if you didn't know how to write, write a uh, resume, it absolutely does help. Uh, I'm trying to get my last bump in my bennies. Oh, snap. The Navy boys are afloat. I'll see myself <laughs> out. Uh, this... <laughs> this, this uh, this, uh, but I'm not sure what language this is, uh, but you know, don't be hating on us, man. Uh, I, did I get a five dollar fine for cursing? Somebody said, uh, I'm sorry, Earl Graves, I didn't mean to curse. Uh, veteran biker said, at first, I thought you were wearing a salty shellback t shirt. Um, I am a shellback, I, I'm, a, I'm a shellback as well. Um, once we were put in a situation that requires hell to be unleashed where things need to be done. Where we are uh, chained, uh, government's thoughts are once our usefulness is no longer needed, we are tossed out. Joe Stiegel, I think we all kind of feel like that or have felt like that um, at one point or another. Um, uh, we got a month, but we get uh, 534 pounds to spend. Uh, this is a mil the military biker. Uh, he must be over in Europe somewhere. Uh, he's talking about pounds and quids. Uh, and uh, that's another thing I want to point out. This problem with veterans and how they're treated is worldwide. Uh, all the way back, you can read about these accounts all the way back to Roman days where uh, Roman veterans couldn't get their pensions. Um, sure. Uh, and there was one time here, even in the United States, that uh, during the Great Depression, that all the veterans showed up in Washington, D.C., like on a million man march kind of thing. Uh, and they set up tents around the uh, uh, Capitol uh, on the mall, as it were. And uh, they made a, a vet city and, and they were, you know, there was the depression. So they were owed a pension and they wanted to get their pension ahead of time because they were starving. And uh, they came in and, and, and this camp went on for a long time. It had thousands of people in it. And uh, the president, I'm trying to remember his name. I don't know if it was Theodore Roosevelt or Truman. I can't remember who the president was. But he he turned the National Guard loose on the veterans uh, and beat them up and put them out of the vet camp. And uh, actually, I think maybe a couple of them might have even been killed. It was, uh, uh, Hoover. Uh, was it Hoover? Hoover. Look that up for me. <laughs> um, I'll double check, but memory tells me it's Hoover. 
To accept, press one. Oh, to send a voicemail, true. press two. We've yeah, the military. The military biker is a YouTuber. Also, he's out of the UK. He he lives up in Canada. Yep. In Canada. Okay. Great. Okay. We got a caller Great. on. Caller, state your name. Alcatraz. Hey. One of my brothers from the mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. We served on submarines together. What's up, man? <laughs> How you doing? I've been sitting here listening. I'm like, oh, damn, let me go ahead and uh, tap in and ask a couple questions. Uh, come on. What? So, so I have a, I have a package. To, uh, I have a package submitted. I was one of them dumb. Oops. I was one of them uh, high salute and get out of the Navy. Yo, I'm in great shape. I don't need anything when I got out back in 92. So over the years, of course, I've gotten older. Knees have gotten bad, back hurts, gained a little weight. Now, you know, I said, you know what, let me go ahead and submit a packet. So I've got a packet submitted. One of my questions, and I've been able to use the uh, buddy letter. Uh, I've been fortunate because uh, one of my buddies is my cornet, my old cornet. So he's like, Keith, let me know whatever it is you need. And then another one is uh, a guy who I used to be his LPO. He retired a uh, command master chief of an uh, aircraft carrier. I'm like, what the fuck you, how do you go from sub to an aircraft carrier? But uh, I was able to use their buddy letter. But in the, in the interim, and uh, veteran bike, I want you to answer this question. Yes, sir. I've had prostate. So... Has there been records, or what's the success of people contracting a form of cancer and it going back to the Navy? I mean, the the uh, the Vietnam era. That's very common because of Agent Orange. Now, I don't know what your rate was on mm -hmm. a sub or where you worked at on the submarine if you were a nuke. Um, the things that you're going to need to file for, I, I don't know what kind of cancer it is, you know, um, but yeah, what you're going to need to say again. Surgery. I sent that surgery. I'm good. But it was, it was prostate right. cancer. It was prostate cancer. Okay. Right. Right. So veteran biker, I, I, this is what I would say, uh, uh, what I would ask you, because you know, this as a submarine sailor, uh, when mm -hmm. we talk about prostate cancer and we talk about where that cancer was, uh, to me, Keith, I, I, I think, or, or Alcatraz, Brother Alcatraz, I think that um, uh, the argument can be made like we used to sit on top of the nuclear warhead and play cards. Do, do you remember that? And uh, I remember hmm. there, that we were so prolific about it because we slept in a, a lot of times when we were junior, we slept in the torpedo room. We slept next to nuclear warheads. We slept on top of them. We sat on them and played cards, and I remember this thing coming out saying, "Hey, retards, don't, don't straddle don't around here. Don't straddle the warhead." Yeah, we would, we would, right. we'd be sitting on the warhead playing cards and putting your gonads on top of that radiation. Uh, and and I remember somewhere about uh, 93, 94, a thing coming out saying, "Hey, uh, you guys aren't sitting." And straddling the warhead and playing cards, are you? Don't, <laughs> don't do that. And that's that's. And if you were on a, if you were in an old ass five ninety four class, you know that carried sub rock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. You know you were definitely exposed. Yep, absolutely. The the did you say it was prostate cancer? Is is that right? Yes. Yes, prostate sir. Cancer. Okay, so the one thing you want in my family. Okay. The one thing you want to add to your claim or talk to your veteran service officer about with prostate cancer, and I'm just going to be real with you because that's the way submarine veterans are. You need to file for ED because prostate cancer is going to affect that. And you, you, you need to file for that. The VA will compensate you for that. Um, the other thing is the VA, as you get older in life, the VA is going to provide you with materials to help you with your prostate uh, because you had your prostate removed. That's going to have some complications with there. Um, for, for that claim to be successful, um, you the other thing you can do is 
I don't, I don't know what submarine it was on, but you could get some of your buddies to write you a letter discussing the ionizing radiation that was involved on that sub and all the submarine guys, all the Navy guys, a lot of Marines that served on ships that were nuke powered, that ionizing radiation can be attributed to that. I'm not saying that it'll get, uh, that they'll link it up to that, but it, it's worth a shot. Um, the, the agent orange that, that Vietnam vet community, the, the radiation or sorry, the, the agent orange with, with the prostate cancer is a presumptive, but, I, I would go that that avenue with the radiation. Got it. No, I appreciate that. Absolutely. And you can email me if you go to my channel and there's an on that about page. My email's there. You uh, shoot me an email and I'm happy to talk to to any of you guys offline, one on one, and uh, and and help with, with anything I can. I, I've been talking to BD uh, about uh, some claims. And I'm I'm happy to help with with anybody that that needs that. If any, if you guys ever need any uh, dark secrets on BD, let me know. <laughs> All right, it's time for you to go. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, now by the way, so just to confirm, it was Herbert Hoover. It was uh, President Herbert Hoover. And it was um, the name of that group uh, of uh, veterans. They were they were referred to as the bonus, the bonus army or the bonus forces. I remember and, that. Um, they I were World War that. One veterans who, because of the as a result of the depression, they were starving. And, um, you know, uh, they were promised a dollar and twenty five dollars a day for for a dollar and twenty a dollar and twenty five cents a day for the time that they were actually in service in combat and they wanted that money and the government was less than willing to give it to them. So, so that's what happened there. They actually beat them up and threw them out of the, uh, yeah. Camp. Yep. So, uh, it's been, it's been tough out there. Um, for a while that want that. And I remember yeah. when you I got bone drinking little wine, BD was using a duster. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> See, these that? bikers are getting getting us uh, getting all getting a little bougie on me. Getting a little bougie. Oh, yeah. Bikers getting a little bougie. Hold on, wait. BD, I saw a question here in the in the <laughs> chat about uh, the DD two fourteens. Uh, do you care if I answer that? No, uh, that's what you're here for. Uh, okay. Me, uh, so try to find that. If you, uh, I think it was Lisa, Lisa Lee was asking about DD-214s. You can have. Uh, Lisa, Lisa. Lisa. I'm sorry, Lisa. Sorry about that. You can have multiple DD-214s and all you need is one DD-214. Because, you know, after you, re when you re-enlist, they discharge you and they give you a, a, another one, right? You get another enlistment. So you get a DD-214 for your entire service. And then you'll get individual DD-214s for different branches. Usually multiple DD-214s are for reservists or National Guard. They'll get multiples. And if you ever lose your DD-214, you can go to a website, archives.gov, archives.gov, and you can request a copy of your DD-214. It's very useful, say, your house house burns down uh, your old lady throws all your shit out and burns it or your ex-husband he, he burns everything it happens so you can get extra copies of those uh, dd 214 the other thing it's useful for say you've got an older family member a father a grandfather that needs to file a claim and he doesn't have it you can go to archives.gov and request that as a family member as a child as a spouse and they'll let you have a copy of that so that you can start that claim process. And there's to, to start the veteran uh, disability or VA disability claim, you only need about three, three things is all you need. Number one, that DD-214. Number two, whatever you're wanting to file for, say it's a knee, a shoulder, a back, traumatic brain injury, you have to have a diagnosis. So you need to talk to a healthcare provider and get a diagnosis for whatever it is. <clears throat> The next thing, um, you need to have some continuity of care. And what I mean by that, say you got out in 1993 and now in 2021, you want to file for your ankle. Well, you go into the VSO 
you've got that DD214, you've got a diagnosis that something's wrong with your ankle, but you don't have that continuity of care. So the VA is going to say, well, why did you wait 28 years to file for your ankle? So what I'm telling you is if you've got a problem, start making some regular visits and putting some deposits in that piggy bank before you go to try and cash it out with the VA. Get some regular care in there so that it's like, okay, his ankle is bothering him. It's, uh, it's bothering him again here in six months. It's bothering him a year, a year later because they show that continuity of care. If you've got that big gap in, uh, in, in care for that, it, it, it's going to be difficult to, to really get that proved. Um, yeah, that, that is, um, holy moly. These are the things that are so important. Now, Lisa says she's going to have to get somebody to help her go through her dad's, um, uh, two DD two fourteen. You can see that right here on the screen. Yeah. So, uh, how would a civilian or, or someone that's not, how would they go about, uh, getting, uh, help? Go to a VSO. Go to a VSO. So what is a VSO? You said VSO about four or five times. What's a VSO? Where do you find one and how do you get you one? Veteran service officers, what VSO stands for, go to your local county courthouse, ask to speak to the veteran service officer. Every county courthouse will have a veteran service officer. Uh, and, um, and so that's how you get a veteran service officer. They work for free. And their job is to take care of you. Outback Outlaw, we appreciate you. Uh, stuck at work, I'll come back and watch the submarine biker. Uh, appreciate that kind donation, sir. Thank you so much for that. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you guys can support the show on our super chat. We uh, absolutely uh, uh, appreciate that. Um, Lissa says uh, thank you. I believe she's talking to us. Um, Esoteric Fitness likes your shirt, man. And uh, my brother, uh, uh, fellow Black Sabbath brother and fellow submarine. Listen, I've been friends with this guy since 1980-something. Uh, I was called J.B. Chill back then, and he was called <laughs> Freshness. <laughs> and so we had the high top fades. But anyway, uh, that, that's been my brother for forever. And I am I remember when I got out of the military and I was telling him, hey, man, you need to get your... Uh, you need to get your, uh, and it's what I was telling you guys. I was telling them, hey, you need to get your stuff together, and I don't need that. Uh, and I, I don't. I'm doing fine. And to you know, to know now uh, that he uh, is going for his benefits and things, um, it's just um, really kind of cool to to know, uh, you know, to, to see that. And but he's got a lot of catching up to do because he got out in 1992. Yeah. So you know, a lot of catching up to do. Cliff Barnett says you squids are all alike. Uh, yes, we are. The best Navy. The best military. Even I the know. Marines fall under the Department of the Navy. Mm -hmm. They work for us. Yeah. The, the, no, no. It's the men's department. It's go, the go men's department. No, it's the, it's the, it's the sick them. We'll go, oh, I, did, I didn't mean for you guys to go get them. Come on. No, not you. Sit down. Yeah. Can't say that. Can, can I tell you something we're doing here in Arkansas right now that's uh, coming up next week? Okay, okay, buddy. Okay, I didn't mean go get them. I, I, okay, I'm sorry. Use the word, DD. Use the word. You got your dog. I got my old lady here putting her titties in the window here with me. So she keeps You said go get them, and that's what she did. <laughs> keeps okay. distracting. So what was that? Somebody, you were saying something. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to tell you something we've got coming up here in Arkansas. Uh, next next Saturday is the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and it, it's it's huge, right? All the, the largest volunteer enlistment in U.S. military history happened after 9-11. Apparently, there were people lined. I mean, I remember there were people lined up down the street trying to join, right? So 20th anniversary, all those people that have joined – are now about to retire or they right. will be reaching retirement here in Washington County, Arkansas, where I live, uh, our local county government has donated a piece of property and there's a local builder that is building a 65 unit uh, subsidized veteran housing facility right across wow. the street from the VA hospital so that wow. those vets that live there can walk to care or, or, you know, go across the street for care. Um, 
we've got a, I mean, there's a homeless veteran population in every city in America, and they're directly addressing it here. One bedroom apartments, it, it's going to be between 250 uh, to 350 dollars a month. So it's going to be subsidized by uh, our, our local housing authority and the VA to get these vets off the street into a veteran only housing facility. So we, we've on uh, September 11th, next Saturday here, uh, we're going to be doing a groundbreaking ceremony and they're going to start construction on that over the next year. And hopefully it's finished in 2022, uh, into 2022, 2023. So I feel uh, really uh, proud to be a part of something like that, to get veterans uh, off the street and, and into a, you know, their own apartment. And they're going to be the Combat Vets Motorcycle Association is going to be holding a poker run to raise money for those vets. When they move in, they might not have toiletries. They might not have a coffee pot. They might not have some sheets and a pillow. And they're raising money to to help them with that. So if there's anybody in Northwest Arkansas wants to come down, we've got a big event lots of food, burgers, uh, sliders for you, for you submarine guys. Uh, they'll have some sliders and Marines and, uh, anybody wants to make a trip up from Texas, uh, hey, where, buddy. uh you're, you're more than welcome. Absolutely more than welcome. Uh, the military biker who's over in, uh, where is he in Canada or Europe? Canada. Canada. Mm -hmm. He says, do you get an immediate pension when you leave the U S military? Only if you do 20 years, <laughs> right. If you got now, two thumbs or, and you're this guy, you do. Uh, you only if you do 20 years or if you um, if you have something wrong with you mm -hmm. uh, where you're not 100 percent. Like gee, if you if you had great knees when you went in the Navy and your knees are bad, if you file, you will get some kind of a pension. 10 percent, 20 percent, whatever the case may be. If you could use your bike, your back before you went in or anything. that. Ha and another thing guys think is. Uh, for instance, you have to get hurt on duty uh, or, or doing a military thing. For for instance, if uh, you get shot while you're in combat, uh, then that's service connected uh, because you got shot on the battlefield. But what people don't know is if you went to a nightclub and you got shot, uh, you're that's still service connected. You were in the military when you got shot. So Absolutely. a lot of guys don't understand that uh, service connected uh, – service connection is um uh uh is service connection it's kind of funny because uh my brother uh alcatraz said he's seen every one of my uh injuries i was i was shot <laughs> four times while i was in the military so it, it's uh it's 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 an interesting thing uh that you would um um uh, uh to, to know these things um uh and, and so i'm just so glad to have you on the show um what what would you what would you you say, it, you know you said some things that were 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 key. You got to have documentation. Uh, we you need to start getting your act together, uh, thinking about that. And these these are young men when they when they're getting ready to get out. If you don't do the full twenty, you're a young man when you're getting out. Uh, so we want to talk about going through your medical record, uh, looking at your injuries and the things that you were sick about. A lot of times, you and another thing reason that that uh, uh, documenting things is so important is a lot of times, especially when we're talking about mental issues, um, you don't understand today when you get out that that's going to be a problem, such as PTSD, ten years down the road, fifteen down. It's just not until you've had your fifth divorce uh, and lost your sixth job uh, that you, you you start asking yourself, what the hell is wrong with me? So uh, um, uh, these are these are some things I want you guys to think about um, uh, as you're getting out. And I want you guys to know that the VA is – there's two pieces to the VA. Piece one um, – piece one is the medical side. And I have found VA medical care to be pretty damn good. I agree. I, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have a, pro, I, I, so, you know, I've had the cushy, wonderful experience working as an engineer at a top co company where I've dropped, you know, I was able to drop 400 bucks a month 
uh, and then I get this incredible service that lets me go sit at uh, Johns Creek um, Emory uh, in a private room, blah, 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 really amazing. That's not what you're going to get at the VA. You're going to be in a room with two to four people in it. Uh, but the protocols were exactly the same. Uh, they've got your chalkboard or, or whiteboard. They've got all these people coming in. They've got your blood sugar. I mean, I've noticed that I've been in both places and the protocols were exactly the same. So I don't really have a complaint about the care. The professionals that work in the VA are very damn dedicated and good at what they do. So the other side of the VA is the bureaucracy. And this is the part that can get you killed. This is the, uh, I set up an appointment and the appointment, I can't be seen for four damn months. You could die in four months. But here's the other problem. If you don't make that appointment, they don't reach back out to you. You've got to restart in the process so it might be eight months because you missed that appointment. But there are other ways that you can make that happen. For instance, you can call up and say, I missed my appointment. Put me on the list so that if you get an appointment that's missed or someone has to cancel, call me up right then. So that way you're not because we're so used to waiting in line. Yeah. We're so used to we, the Navy was all about lines i don't know if the marine corps maybe because y'all were jarheads y'all no, no. in front of the line hey i'll tell you <laughs> and the navy's always behind look i'll tell you what it's uh two <laughs> things in the marine corps they tell you thing number one hurry up and wait hurry up and wait and like sometimes you're not waiting fast enough so you got to wait faster because you're not waiting fast enough the first time you got to wait better uh second thing is whoever rooster run is hey simplify brother because uh, oh, we got a lot there. you said we got a lot of folks writing in right now, and some of them are talking cash, you know what, about the Marine Corps. And Rooster Run is out there. He's fighting the good fight for the Marine Corps right now. He's he's one of the he's one of the viewers. He's writing in and he's keeping he's keeping those Navy boys at bay. There's a whole fight going on that y'all don't know about right now. Anyway. Good job, Rooster Run. I've been watching I, it. Number five. Um so um um like Cliff Burnett said, uh, any injury sustained during your time in service is service connected. So uh, uh, that's because the government owns you 24 seven. So they're responsible for you. So I want you guys to, to know that um, it, the, the bureaucracy side is the side where many of us fail because we don't have the patience. Uh, we don't have, you know, after being told and turned down and denied, for instance, for myself, um, I've actually hired uh, a, a law firm called Vet Comp and Pen because the process is debilitating. And unless you have a VSO or something, um, unless you have that, you you really um, out on your own. Um, I'm trying not to sneeze, uh, but there are some um, resources out there and i want to tell you about one uh that's on my uh library uh and this was um a book that i got and it's called uh the veteran survival guide uh how to um well, why would this do this to me uh uh the veteran survival guide how to file uh, co and collect on VA claims. So if you don't have a VSO officer, if you want to, to, to be successful at this stuff, you're going to have to take a master's degree uh, and finding out this information. So this is my Kindle and you can see where, as I've read, I've highlighted things uh, to, to, to learn the system. So it's unfortunate that as a veteran, you got to learn all this crap in order to process uh, your your claim, unless you're going to use a, a person like veteran biker who who knows this stuff inside and out. Uh, this one and, and and so, but there are resources out there for you. Um, 
this is the the, the book that I got. Mm-hmm. And I actually got a couple of these books, and this is one of the, the top selling books. Um, and and so once I got into reading this book, and I was like, you know what, this is a lot. I, this is a full time job here. So it what is. I'm going to do? That's, that's another degree in itself for you guys. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it's yeah. like a whole. You need a course for this thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds uh, like. Um, and so um, you you when you have to go to this level uh, of education to be able to defend yourself, um, sometimes uh, some guys now some guys will soak this up. Some some I've got two of these books. One is. Um, uh, towards claims in general and one is towards claims directed towards ptsd they've got these books for everything you want to do and they've got courses and they've got videos and they've got youtube pages and and that's what veteran biker is going to be doing on a lot of his youtube page stuff is talking about some of these issues there's help for you out there you have to avail yourself of it do not get to the point where they piss you off so bad you say f it because you're only effing you you're only effing you and the people that that are your family members your wife whomever the case may be you can't get so frustrated with this process that you let the process beat you that's the bureaucracy that they've set up between the sailor the marine the airman the coast guardman um the army men they they've set this bureaucracy up because there are too many of you. And now, 20 years in Afghanistan, 20 years. So now, not only are you competing for limited resources, they keep adding competitors to the limited resources. So it's not like they're passing in Congress, oh, let's give more money. They're passing in Congress, let's take more money. So some of the things that we see is once you spent all this time and all these years getting paid, we see them coming back and doing uh, these uh, audits on records and telling people, oh, we gave you 100%. We were wrong. Now we're only going to give you 80%. And we're taking our money back. And just all kind of <clears throat> silliness. Hey, Talk to us about I'll, that. Better. I'll, I'll share re- real super quick. I'll slide this in there real quick. Um, and not not wanting to get too political or nothing. But um, when this thing started, uh, meaning Afghanistan, when Afghanistan first got going, uh, George Bush was uh, in his defense. Can't believe I'm doing it. But uh, but in his defense, this was pitched as a uh, this will be one year, a one year war at the most. What this has turned into a one. This has been a it hadn't been a 20 year war. It's been a one year war that was fought 20 times over as a result of uh, new intelligence or or bad decisions or a variety of different things. So we've got a variety of different administrations that have been involved in the process and all that. But the pitch in regard to veterans was because that was actually a conversation 20 years ago, as in what, if anything, is this going to do to our veteran population? And at the time it was pitched, hey, this is a one year war. We've got what's one year? Well, nobody could ascertain that it was a one year war fought 20 times over. And so thusly, you've got one year of war veterans times 20. And that's yep. what we're kind of dealing with now. But I'm sorry, as you were saying, Vet Biker. Um, the, the thing that we're seeing now um, with the mental health side of things, because of what happened in Afghanistan, like you said, not to get into the political side of it, but there's so many guys like me and, and, and others that served in Afghanistan that now feel like everything they did, all the buddies they lost, all the, all the friends and people they lost in Afghanistan was for naught or nil or zero, whatever you want to call it. And there's been a dramatic increase just over the last three, four weeks with mental health at the VA facility next to where I work at, because so many of those people, I mean, you saw the the guy on uh, probably on the news, the Lieutenant Colonel that had served in, in Afghanistan multiple times and just threw his entire career away because he felt so yep. gutted. And there's so many of us, full disclosure, I'm hundred percent disabled vet. I went to Iraq. I went to Afghanistan, right? I, I did those things. 
Um, I'm 100% disabled vet. I'm also retired from the Navy. I, I can speak from both sides of the of the aisle on how to file and what filing means. And I encourage everyone, number one, get care. Go and seek some care. Get some health care. And take care of yourself. File the paperwork later. Get right in your head. Get right with your body and file the paperwork later. That paperwork will wait, you know. But but get right and do it for your own for, for your own well being. But we are gonna see with all of these, uh, with, with all of these things ending and these drawdowns with people leaving Afghanistan, we're going to see more of this. We're going to see more people coming to file, and that's just the way it is. You know, um, it, it's 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 just the way it is. We're going to see more people coming to file claims, and the VA is not prepared for it. You know, they're they're just not. The VA system where I'm where I'm at, they have twelve primary care doctors. Each one of those doctors is responsible for about 30,000 veterans. And with the drawdown, which we'll see, because now that we're out of Afghanistan, there's a lot of vet, there's a lot of active duty military that aren't going to need to be to be had. That is going to cause an increase for that. The VA is not prepared. Um, the 20 year anniversary of Afghanistan there. It's just not prepared for that. So yeah. seek care and start on those claims. I, I can't encourage people enough. If you reach out to me through my YouTube channel and get my email address, I will set up a time and we will talk. We'll zoom. We'll whatever is best for you. Uh, FaceTime, whatever the hell, if you need help, you let me know. Uh, I, I mean that genuinely. Fireball asks us, how does SSDI work with VA disability? Can you use uh, your VA claim to get SSDI? So SSDI is Social Security Disability Insurance. That goes completely based off of the amount of money that you've paid in through the Social Security system. Just because you're 100% disabled vet does not mean that you're entitled to Social Security. Social Security is its own system and its own entity. Now, if you're 100% disabled vet and you want to go file for Social Security, go do it. They're going to send you to some of their own doctors, much the way the VA sent you to doctors to be evaluated through the VA. But if you're a disabled vet, I encourage you to go file for Social Security because just being a disabled vet, your paperwork goes to the top of that Social Security disability insurance pile. And that's a good question. A lot of people don't know about that. Military biker, when you retire from active duty, you start collecting your retirement pay. Yes, sir. Um, and your retirement pay is different from your disability pay. The retirement pay is um is taxed and the disability pay is not is that correct absolutely your retirement pay is taxed depending on what state you're in i live in arkansas they don't tax military retirement and your disability is not taxed and also for just where i live if you're a hundred percent disabled veteran permanent and total you don't pay property tax like on your home vehicle what whatever other things that you own so it just goes according to the state. And you can go to va.gov. va.gov is your website to start for that. You can also go to uh, on on the va.gov and that'll pull up. You can find your local veteran service officers. You can find your, your local VA facilities on, on that. Man, I, I just really feel like this has been a good show tonight. Um, well, um, I really, I, I, I've, I, I'm sorry that uh, it's all vet stuff because. Oh, no, it's okay. I mean, that's I figured it was going to be about that. But one, I, I hope my word about being on the show, too. I really find it, I do find it interesting because uh, I, tr I try to connect both sides from my side of the medical and what I see and hearing everything you're talking about. So I was actually intrigued about it. Uh, don't. Do you stop. have a lot of veteran friends? I mean, I know. Oh, yeah. And, and there's, see, that's the way that a lot of a lot of vets a lot of guys when they get out they don't want to go file and it actually takes a friend saying hey man I, i'm your buddy i love you i want you to go i want you to go do this for you or go do this for your family and i'm sure that we've all got vet friends whenever i first got out i didn't want to file for anything and you feel that uh 10 feet tall and bulletproof like you've had a good night on tequila you you, yeah. you don't want to go file for this stuff you know and you, you need to take care of yourself because you might feel good now, but 20 years down the road, 
it, it's like a bike ride. It, it's like getting on your bike and going doing a thousand miles. You feel good at the beginning, but you know when you stop, the legs are stiff, the back's hurting, the ass is hurting, and, and that's that's our life. You know that is yeah. that is it, it's it's just like that. And, and that's the point about having you on the show. It's not just about your YouTube channel. I mean, the majority yeah. of all the comments, there's tons of people that are asking questions, need help, and. Trust me, we can shoot the shit. I'll throw some Navy jokes here and there. But, I mean, it's it's actually helping people, and that's what the most important thing about this show is. If we can help people, and um, like I said, in the biking community, there's so many angles, so many it, – it's like a spider web. And yeah. uh, it, it's nice to see how people relate, and that's what I like seeing people relate, how the commentary uh, people, viewers, you know, they have all these curiosities, these questions. And I bet everybody knows like family or friends. My brother was in the army, Fort Sill, Oklahoma artillery. Uh, yep. So you have guys like that who has hearing issues, big hearing issues. Uh, yep. So yeah, no, it's uh, uh, so I enjoyed the show myself. So I'll, I'm I mean, here watching it. So. Anybody out there that's in, in this or, or is going to watch black dragons video tomorrow, the next day, whatever. If you reach out to me, I will do everything I can to help you. Hey, and, you know, let me throw this out here, uh, Black yes, Dragon. I've been thinking about this uh, while this show's been going on. And I know in my family, and this is, and you, you touched on it earlier on. In my family, uh, you know, all in my family, the brothers, my myself and my brothers, if you're a boy child in my family, you go in the Marine Corps. If you're a girl child in my, well, you know, shit, I have no idea what the girl childs in my family do. They don't go in the Marine Corps, so I don't know what they do. Anyway, so as far as the guys, though, uh, we go into the Marine Corps and the ideology was unless you, you know, as far as the VA was concerned, the way we grew up, you go to the VA when you're in a wheelchair or you're missing a leg or a limb or you're just crazy out of your gourd. That's what the VA is for. And a whole lot of years passed by and I had all kinds of issues and stuff like that. And I had, uh, you know, a civilian job at one point with uh, civilian doctors. And, you know, I did that whole thing. And you know, I complain, oh, man, it's expensive and this, that, and the other thing, and insurance, this, that, and the other thing. And finally, uh, my sister Kim said today, she goes, you know, you can go to the VA, right? I said, well, we don't do that in my family. And she goes, well, who the hell told you that? You know, it's the same family. I said, well, you know, the way we were raised, she goes, listen, she goes, I don't give a damn what they used to say in the 1960s and 1970s. She goes, this is 2005. And, you know, at the time, this is 2005. She goes, you know, bunk all that, you know, and she broke it down to me in such a fashion. Whereas I have, after a whole lot of years was like, oh, damn, wait a minute, maybe she's on to something. And and also the piggyback on what uh, you guys were saying, uh, Dagan, uh, Vet Biker and BD, uh, the, the most excellent care with the VA. Uh, I've heard a lot of people, oh, it's this and it's that. No, I, I, I cannot co-sign any of that. I've had the most excellent care with the VA. Um, so yeah seek help if you need it seek it out it's there for you and uh the the country when i go to the va i feel appreciated and reminded of yeah i did actually sign a blank check to the government once upon a time to my country and um and they're honoring that and um and they will but we got to do what we got to do to make sure that we get that help because of the, the bureaucracy side of it like you mentioned earlier bd the bureaucracy side is to you know squeeze those pennies but the folks that are there that provide that care if you can get past all of that bureaucracy they are there to do a fantastic job taking care of you that's all i got i i want to say something here um I, I know the motorcycle community whatever your group you're riding with is a lot of veterans for me dealing with my ptsd the best thing that i did was get a motorcycle because it you are mm -hmm. so focused on other things, the idiot texting, the the idiot swerving, looking ahead. I mean, it, it was so good for my mental health, and it still is. So I know I noticed that on your page, uh, in your about section, you said I'm writing for, for my you know mental health. Yeah, history. absolutely, man. Yeah. For me personally, it's the best thing I ever did, and oh, yeah. <clears throat> and and not only that, but it opens up other doors for brotherhood. And when guys leave the military or women, the thing they miss is that brotherhood. So that's that's the big thing for me. Wild, I got a question for you. You said your brother was in the uh, in, in the army. Yeah, Fort Sill. Uh, he, he went to well, he went to basic Fort Sill, then he went back to Fort Sill for artillery. 
so, artillery school, the largest artillery base in the world. Yep. So what, what I encourage people to do, and, and Bone, to tie yours in, into this, the person that joined the Army that you knew as your brother, I guarantee you, and you'll back me up on this, was not the same guy that came home, not the same kid brother that came home. Oh, no. And, totally different. and we all know that. We all know that bone when, when you were a, a, a young, dumb and, and full of, you know, what, 19 yeah. going in the Marine Corps, yeah. you were different when you came home. And I tell people all the huge, time, huge. Yep, yeah. you were a different person that came home. BD, you were a different person that was a nub on that sub. And then you come home and, and you've got a lot more baggage. So for guys to wait to file, don't. Go and get health care. Go and seek that. Start that process because you're a different human being that started. And and while uh, how long how long was your brother in for? And and talk to me a little bit about how different he was, if you feel comfortable with that. Or, well, I mean, or, just for a little, like I said, uh, that's more his issues. I mean, he, he sure. was in, I forgot how many. It was over fourteen years. Or so. <laughs> uh, but he, he uh, ever I mean, ever ever. I mean, from the first time he came back, he he's just totally different. I mean, from being quiet. Uh, not as uh, funny as he used to be. In the way he's always making jokes, but then he just personality changed really quick, and he goes zero to hundred in like two seconds, and it just like looks like a whole, just like a whole different person. And uh, you can't even communicate, you know, with him at that point. So you know, we butt, butt had a lot of heads that out of nowhere. We'll just get into a big fight. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that's the main thing I would change is he's a uh, two different people. Yeah, uh, it's almost like the yeah. bipolar personality, you know, type of. Uh, I mean, I've like got a service dog. I, I got yeah. a service dog, and I call my motorcycle my damn service motorcycle, man. <laughs> That's my service really? motorcycle. I can have a really? bad day, and I get on my bike and ride home for those 10, 12 miles home, and I feel great. Wild, your videos, it's always showing you either going to work or coming home from work. You're either yeah. starting off with some good adrenaline. Or leaving and recovering. That's my therapy, man. Uh, being in the car sucks in general. Going to work, yep. leaving work, you get lost. But I'll, I mean, I'm a horrible driver with the car. With the bike, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm good, but I'm a lot better. I concentrate more. It gets my mind focused. Uh, just I feel relieved when I get to work. When I'm leaving, I look forward to getting on the bike to get out of work. I'm the same uh, way. I got I got my little service dog. He's what knocked over my light a, a little bit ago, and. Uh, some some people don't realize that the service dog it, it's kind of a tool it's just there to distract you from the idiot that's tap dancing on your last nerve so you yeah. don't choke his ass out yeah that 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 yep. <laughs> that's what that service animal's for and uh and some people just don't realize that and no, i encourage I have, I have two now <laughs> you got two <laughs> yeah i, I encourage <laughs> so many of these uh younger generation and, and maybe not even vets. I've got a bunch of people coming out to volunteer at our thing that aren't vets that were like, hey, we'd like to come help, but we don't know how to help. And I'm just like, come on out. Some veterans going to appreciate you. And we all know you've got veterans, friends, vet family. Everybody is. We're, we're all in this together. I mean, we're literally all in it together. The, the word veteran is not partisan. It's not Republican. It's not Democrat. It's not libertarian. The word veteran is not white, black, Asian. It's, it's so uh, broad. It's so broad. It covers everything. And like I said, I started my YouTube channel because of a, an ex uh, Royal Marine. He, he's Scottish. He lives up in a, in a Northern Scotland a town called Aberdeen. And I started my YouTube channel just because me and that dude put on a lot of miles and I, I appreciate it. And if I can help anybody through my YouTube channel, yeah, I make some videos where I'm riding, talking shit, whatever. But I also the main goal of my the main goal of my channel is to give back and help vets. That that's that's what I want. Well, that's with that said, man. Yeah, buddy. That's really cool. So we're at this about. And I got my book. Before I came on the show, I got my damn book. Damn. <laughs> How much you pay him, BD? How much? <laughs> Going. I don't have a book. I got promised books. I never got them. What? Hey, before I came in here, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, man. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what kind of shit was going to go down. I was like, hey, I, I got to talk. I got to read this. 
I, I, um, I'm not trying to start anything. Hey, listen, I have uh, five <laughs> books out. Prospects Bible, How to Join a Traditional Motorcycle Club. The Sergeant at Arms Bible, Soldier Sergeant of the MC. Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs. The Public Relations Officers Bible, How a Motorcycle Club Should Manage Its Publics. And my newest book, um, President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. You can get all my books on Amazon. You can also get my books on Kindle. And if you want uh, uh, autographed copies of them, then BlackDragonsGear.com. BlackDragonsGear.com is where you can go get uh, everything I have, my T-shirts, everything. Uh, look at this here. Yeah, there we go. This is my shameless plug for my uh, my uh, <laughs> stuff. Uh, so this is BlackDragonsGear.com where you can get all the Cool black dragon t-shirts, the we shirts, the MC is about we, not about I. There's no I in MC, although a lot of us think there is. So anyway, <laughs> those are uh, my uh, uh, accomplishments in in the biker world. I'm very uh, fortunate to have um, uh, to just to have these books uh, as number one bestsellers. That's another cool thing. Uh, my book, uh, President's Bible, has now. Um, uh, debuted as the number one uh, seller in its category. So, wow, uh, we're doing good, man. We're doing good. Appreciate that. So, right on. Um, and you know, I've got some guys on the show that uh, want to write some books. I'm um, very happy to listen. If you want to write a book, just contact me. Um, I will absolutely do everything in my power to uh, to get you published. Uh, this is a uh, look at that number one new release in. Uh, uh, motorcycle history. So yeah. uh, I'm really excited about uh, that. I'll be glad when one day I make like the U.S. Times bestseller New York Times. one release. Uh, Pre-ordered President's Bible years ago. I still don't have my copy. Uh, if if you haven't gotten an email from me and you pre-ordered the President's Bible at fifteen dollars, I I have ordered all those books. And if you pre-ordered and you sent that money to me, your book is on its way. So, folks that don't know that, um, I absolutely um, have honored that. And those people that pre-ordered this this book for me in 2018, uh, your books have been uh, are on their way. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm sending emails out to all of you people saying, "Hey, your book is on its way." So. I want to thank you guys for that and everything. Listen, this is Black Dragon Biker TV. We have got uh, um, some really cool folks on. We got Big Bone, uh, one percenter. You can find Bone over here. Where's Bone's thing? Hell on Wheels Garage podcast, including the usual suspects. And the segment that has Big Bone is the uh, uh, is the hell is the Hell on Wheels, right? No, no, usual suspects. Usual, usual suspects. suspects. Uh, and then we also have, um, oh, let me not forget my brother. Um, Wild on Twos, there's yours. Be sure to check out Wild yeah. on Twos. Yeah. And it's you Twos with a lot of Twos. Well, the number Twos. Not and then also, boom, be sure to check out Veteran Bikers. I hope you guys can see that scrolling on your phones. Uh, Veteran Bikers YouTube channel. And Veteran Biker is, you know, he his job is to protect us and and get us the benefits that we're supposed to have so uh um uh, we appreciate that um listen uh i want to add this too uh no worries i'll hit you up offline to double check listen so to hit me up offline if you have ordered a book for me and you haven't heard from me uh it's probably because i haven't gotten down to sit man i got a lot to send out <laughs> I need, uh, I need, I need, I need you to sell some shirts for me or something. You can I'll put my shirts in your store. Yeah, put, bring your shirts onto my store. <laughs> I don't have. Can I say one thing? <laughs> I'm like the worst person. I don't have shit. But but if you if you uh, black dragon at blacksabbathmc.com, that's how you you send me mail. Black dragon at blacksabbathmc.com. Yes, veteran biker. What do you have for us? I just want to say one thing. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. And uh, I, I I I didn't want to dominate the show by talking about vets benefits and rights, but I know it's very important. I know it's important to you. I personally, being retired military, I don't ever tell guys, thank you for your service. Because of my job, I tell vets, I've got the watch, right? 
I've got the watch. You did what you did while I, while I was active duty, and now I've got the watch. And I want any of the veterans in there to know, Bone, if you need any help, Black Dragon, if you need help, if you've got some friends, family members, you let them know. Come to me. I'll help. I've got the watch. Same thing with you, Wild. If, if, if you know anybody that needs anything, and it's just a, a real honor to be on with with some heavy hitters in the uh, in the motorcycle community. I really appreciate it. Well, we wish you all the luck for your channel. We want folks to go over to your channel, Veterans Biker, and check it out. Folks, this is what it looks like. Go over there and give him a like, man. Follow. You got to hit the... Uh, uh, uh the subscribe button see i subscribe you Abuse get the it. notification bell can you join you 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 can already join you wow yep i think that's recent okay. yeah when i first got into the program it took a year and a half before you could join man i'm so jealous and you guys give you guys everything <laughs> man. This is hey uh, um <laughs> hey bd can i do one of those shameless plugs that we were yeah, talking absolutely. about yeah okay so uh so i'm the chairman for the for the coc in my part of florida so it's the wfl meaning west florida coc uh which really is more like central florida but anyway um if you go on facebook it's wfl coc uh if it, if you're going the internet is uh wflcoc.org i think it is but uh definitely if you get some downtime check it out all kinds of things there it tells you a little bit about what we're doing but um you know we love the visitors. We love the questions. Any of that, um, and of course, my um, my uh, what do you call it? My email is uh, bone at gmail. But any of the social media, it's all the same stuff. Bone, uh, what is it? Uh, bone dot at on Instagram or Facebook. We don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what is yeah, it? You so that's tell it. Us. Yeah, yeah, um, that's it. So I, I, we've got your site pulled up, Western Florida Council of Clubs. So. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. you know, this is really cool. Um, All kinds uh, of pretty stuff on there. Oh, look at oh, that. Damn, that's me. Right there. Wow. Oh, shit. Okay. Damn. Is, look at that. They talked about there. them. <laughs> that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, brother. I'm adding a lot of new stuff over the next week or two. It's going to be a lot of new stuff, articles and so forth that I write. I, I write a lot for uh, these different magazines. Like, uh, well, one of them, a, a new magazine that's coming out uh, called Let's Ride and um, periodically for Full Throttle and some of the other stuff. But um, I try to throw some articles here and there on um, on the Facebook page. But anyway, I'll shut the hell up. And I'm just yeah, glad it's all hell. Over here. Here. This, this ain't no BS. Yeah. This is a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is awesome. Oh, holy moly. I didn't even know bikers knew how to do websites and stuff. Go on ahead, man. <laughs> that is really cool. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we got everybody shameless plug tonight. That's really cool. We'll come back to mine. All right. So we appreciate everybody. <laughs> Um, anything else? Anybody got anything else for me? No. Nope. No, sir. All right. So what we will do is uh, we'll get ready to get up out of here, folks. I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents and everybody yeah. else's two cents. Please like, <laughs> share, follow, and subscribe. If you got folks in the military, put them on this channel. Send them to Veteran Biker on on uh, on YouTube, and he will find you some help. He will help you. That's his job. He says every day is Veterans Day where he yeah. works, and he's even got some Army guys over there. So <laughs> we we want you to know that there are places that you can get some help if you're just getting out of the military or looking at getting out of the military. Call call Veteran Biker up so he can help you get your SHIT together so that you're not 30 years later trying to get stuff and folks are telling you records don't exist and all that kind of stuff. Don't do that to yourself. They're not honorable. The bureaucracy is not honorable like you were when you went to serve. So you have to fight and you have to protect yourself because they're dishonorable. They want to save money. They don't want to take care of you. So I'm, uh, but but once you get in the system, the people that work there, I don't want you to hate the VA because the people that work there, they're responsible for your care. They're going to give you the best damn care in the world. It's just getting beyond the bureaucracy to get that care. They're like two different people. You got the devil with horns, and you got the good people with halos. And so yeah. work to get over to the good people with halos, and and get yourself taken care of. If you spent ninety days in the military and you had a, an honorable discharge, you are a veteran. 
uh, that qualifies for, um, for, for these services. All right. I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And Thanks. get skinny. Right on, brother. Take care.